So you've decided to buy a house. Here's the mistakes you want to make sure to avoid. Hey, I'm Adam D with KW Realty and The Local Connect. And today we're going to be talking about the mistakes to avoid when you're buying a house. The first mistake that I see almost on a weekly basis is buyers get ready when they're ready. What I mean by that is you go look at a house, you fall in love with it, and then you start the process of getting ready to buy. And unfortunately, when you do that, you run out of time in most cases, particularly in this market. So what I recommend doing instead is with your real estate agent, go over the contract of sale, go over what's required to make an offer, go over all the things that you need to think about and be prepared to do when the time comes to make an offer. That way, when you're looking at houses, you can think just about the house and if that's the right house or the right location for you. You don't have to worry about how you're gonna prepare the offer. The mistake is, is everybody waits to do this, they find the house they absolutely love, and then they do all the stuff to get ready to make the offer, and they run out of time. The next step, which is in line with the first mistake, is waiting to talk to a mortgage lender until you find the right house. Most of the people we work with are very savvy and they have a good understanding of what their income is and their credit scores, etc. But they often forget that there's much more to a mortgage. You know, we deal with a lot of condominiums, a lot of HOAs, other things that a mortgage lender has to look at. And sometimes the mortgage lender may need a little bit of help or a little bit of time to get you pre-approved. More importantly, if you're self-employed, it's gonna take even longer to get pre-approved. And what I don't wanna happen is see you fall in love with a house, call the lender, and again, you run out of time before you can purchase the house or somebody else gets it before you. You also wanna make sure that you're working with a lender who is local, familiar with our local market, and has experience with the property type that you're buying. Again, if you're buying a condo, you wanna make sure the lender has worked with or underwritten those types of condos before. Because you wanna relay that confidence to the seller that they're gonna be able to get the job done. One of the biggest mistakes that's also the most difficult to understand is offering too little in your initial offer and therefore having a longer negotiation. So what I mean by this is a lot of buyers think that the rightest strategy to get a better price on the house is to make a lower offer. And while that may make sense on the surface, here's what I see happen very frequently. By making a lower offer initially, it causes more of a back and forth negotiation with the seller. And the more time that you introduce into the negotiation, the higher the chances that another buyer comes in to make an offer. So for example, you're the only buyer in the house, you make a low offer, you're going back and forth with a negotiation with the seller, and while that's transpiring, the seller gets another offer. And now you have no leverage any longer as a buyer, because now the seller has at least two offers instead of just yours. So what I recommend instead is it often works out better if you just come in with whatever your best number is, that doesn't have to be the highest number, just needs to be whatever you are comfortable with, and just bring it to the seller as a take it or leave it offer so that you can reduce the amount of time that it takes to negotiate with the seller and hopefully avoid another buyer coming in and beating you out. Another big mistake that we see is getting advice from the wrong people. Oftentimes these wrong people are the people that you love the most. But let me tell you, what happens is you see a house, you really like it, and your parents, your sibling, your best friend, or another professional talks you out of it because they think it's a bad idea. And then as a real estate agent, you call me a few months later and say, ah, oh, I'm kicking myself. I really wanted that house. I never should have you know, listened to my friend who told me it was a bad idea. If possible, I'm not telling you to buy the house, but make sure that it's your decision and not somebody else's whether you do or you do not buy the house, you wanna make sure that you're comfortable with that decision being yours, not somebody else's. Now the last biggest mistake we see is getting too emotional in a real estate transaction. Now don't get me wrong, buying and moving is an extremely emotional process, but there's a time and place for it as well. So number one, this is your decision. You have to be comfortable with whatever you choose to do. You know there's always more time and there's always more houses. So if it's not the right house for you, that's a fine decision. Wait for the next one or get some clarity on what you want the next one. So my advice is don't let your emotions take over. Be emotional to make sure it's the right house. But after that, you may have to treat this more like a business decision and make decision based off of the dollars and cents. So now you know some of the biggest mistakes we've seen buyers make over the years. If you want some more advanced strategies and other suggestions, you can reach me at 609-604-5958. I'm Adam D with the local Connect and KW Realty. We help buyers and sellers here at the Jersey Shore. If you like the information we spoke about today, please make sure to subscribe to my channel so you're alerted on all things about buying and selling at New Jersey Shore.